So the purpose of the whole thing is for God to give himself to his son and raise his sons to the level of the father. That's the purpose of the whole vast scheme. So God actually has a purpose and he will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his mind. In the latter days you will know it clearly. And that purpose is to give himself to you as though there was no one else in the world. Just you and you are God the Father. If God is a father, then there is a child somewhere and that child is David. So you have played or are playing or you're going to play all the parts in the world. So in the end you will say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So as far as this little garment, this is the garment in which I was buried, from which I rose, from which in the not distant future I will take off for the last time and move with my resurrected brothers into the fullness of light. This is the dark garment that all of us wear. Whether the pigment be this color, black, yellow, pink, white, this is the dark garment. And in it we are dreaming. And we are buried in our skull. And in our skull we remain until one day we are called from the grave. And then who awakes? You awake. But how do you know who you are? Wait. Won't take long. You awake. And in a matter of three and a half years, you completely play within yourself the entire drama of Jesus Christ. And so you will know who Jesus Christ really is. No man looking at you can see Jesus Christ. You have to reveal yourself, make yourself manifest to the one that you would unveil yourself to. And he sees you in spirit. He does not see you with the mortal eye. So when you are seen, a little innocent child of eight saw me. A lady who is now gone from this world, Martha, she saw me. There are two here tonight who saw me. One only recently saw me in the role of the part called Jesus Christ. I tell you, I have awakened from the dream. I know who I am. Yet this little garment still holds me and will hold me until I take it off in the not distant future. And I promise you, I will make myself manifest to you. And you will know it. For no one comes unto me save my father calls him. But no one. And if he calls him, he calls him for a purpose. And in that day, I'll make myself known. But while here, only to a few. Well, so far I know of six to whom I've shown myself. The little one of eight, the innocent little one, and others grow in this world. And strangely enough, they're all women, as told us in Scripture, minus the one whose part was played by the male. But that is a state of consciousness and not necessarily a male. For Peter is simply a state of consciousness. And that was played by the little one, the innocent one, who was then only eight, when she saw me in the row, and saw me as the king, as A, he saw them as the king, as you're told in scripture. And I will wear the crown of righteousness, the crown of faith, I've kept the faith. For all this was foreshown me before I set sail. Not could I foresee, but I learned how the wind would sound, after these things should be. I could not tell anyone while the journey was still in progress until the end. Then I learned how that spirit sounded. It's a wind, an unearthly wind. And then all of a sudden the whole thing unfolds within you and you are the one spoken of in scripture as Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is always invisible. He is the Christus absconditus, always a hidden Christ. And if you're going to see him coming from without, you're looking for the false one. You'll never see him coming from without by your mortal eyes. Today there are those great evangelists speaking to millions of people on TV, telling you the end of the world is coming and they're waiting for you to come on the outside. They're looking in the wrong direction. 
He always comes from within. He rises from within the man in whom he is buried. And he is buried in every child born a woman. That child couldn't breathe were it not that Christ is buried within him.